We are following some new reports out of Brazil, where officials are raising concerns about an alleged pipeline of Russian spies. According to the Wall Street Journal, at least three men living under fake identities at one time in Brazil could have ties to the Kremlin. Moscow has denied any Russian agents are operating in Brazil, but officials there suspect there could be more undetected Russian spies attempting to infiltrate the U.S. We want to welcome Jamil Jaffer, the founder and executive director of the National Security Institute. Thank you, Jamil, as always, uh, for being here. There have been a lot of reports. I mean, we go back to March. Uh, there was a Brazilian spy from Russia who posed as a student in Washington. The Washington Post reporting on this. In February, there were reports the U.S. was trying to extradite a man in Brazil known for drug smuggling. Why is Brazil becoming a haven of espionage? Well, you know, Adrian, it's not unusual for the Russians to use third countries as a place uh, for running operations out of. Uh, Brazil is a new uh, part of this operation, but we've seen in the past the Russians use uh, different countries. Canada, for example, has been a common place uh, where they run these illegal programs. An illegal program is essentially an operation where uh, they try to establish an identity for an individual over the long run um, and then place them in a third country. And so Brazil has become a place where they're using Brazil for identities. In part, Adrian, uh, because once you have uh, a birth certificate in Brazil, it's much easier to get all the other forms of identification, so it becomes easy to establish a long-term identity there. A decade ago, you know, as I did research on this, Brazil's government actually admitted that they spied on, they monitored targets in the U.S., Russia, and Iran. Is it possible that Brazil is complicit in harboring spies or aiding them? You know, Adrian, it's possible, but it's probably unlikely. And the reason why is certainly any country uh, would run operations if it can uh, and if it's successful at doing so. Uh, but to cooperate with a third party country and to give them access to your system um, and to enable those operations can be dangerous. Um, and so it's unlikely the Brazilian government is complicit in it, uh, but it may be that they know they have a permissive environment and they're not doing anything about it. Yeah, well, and we need to do something about it. The U.S. has been on the hunt, actually, for high value exchanges uh, to swap out former U.S. Marine Paul Whelan, Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gerskovich, not just in Brazil, but around the world. So are we thinking that this potentially could happen with Russian spies alleged to be in Brazil? It's certainly possible. You know, when the U.S. Uh, wrapped up that group of uh, 10 illegal agents uh, back in 2011, a uh, number of folks in the United States that we've been watching for over a decade, uh, we engaged in a significant spy swap with the Russians. We got back uh, four total spies, a couple of them uh, that were U.K. assets and a couple that were uh, American, one that was American. Um, and eventually, actually, one of them, uh, Sergei Skripal, was uh, the target of that Russian uh, attack, if you remember, the uh, the so-called Novichok attack um, there in London. So um, there is some precedent for uh, engaging in swaps for others that are detained. The problem, of course, Adrian, is that creates an incentive for nations to detain more of our people if we engage in swaps like we did for Brittany Griner. Yeah, absolutely setting a precedent there. Might the U.S. also look at ways to enforce immigration restrictions on Brazilians in light of all of this? It's certainly possible, but you know, you know, oftentimes these are onesie, twosies assets. And so if you change your immigration laws significantly because you're worried about one or two uh, potential Russian assets, that can be a significant change. And so, you know, that's a possible option. Um, they certainly could put more pressure on Brazil uh, to strengthen their system, uh, the way they develop their driver's licenses and the like, uh, and the way they identify people and, and confirm their identities, not just based on a birth certificate. What is our overall relationship with Brazil right now? Has it changed in the past few years? Well, you know, Brazil has had some changes in its government as well. And so uh, our relationship with Brazil has changed over time. Um, you know, it's been a rocky relationship. Brazil is part of the BRICS countries, uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China. Uh, which are sort of coming together and trying to create alternative currencies and the like uh, to the U.S.-led system. And so that has been a challenge of our relationship. Uh, but the relationship has gone back and forth with Brazil in recent years. All right, Jamil Jaffer, thank you as always. That's something we'll certainly keep monitoring. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.